Hi, Hans. Uh, thank you so much for joining this episode of Talent Talks. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to have you on. Um, you're someone that I've looked up to a lot since I've met you. Um, just in terms of your involvement in, you know, hugely successful TV talent and TV shows. And so I just really wanted to sit down with you and dig into your career a little bit more and the milestones that got you to this point. Um, so as a starter for 10, what does talent mean to you right now? Um, I mean, you know, I'm not going to be the first person to say this, but, you know, talent has never been more broadly defined than it is today. Um, you know, talent used to be, you know, at least in the, in the, in, in the performing talent used to, you know, fit into pretty narrow boxes. You know, you did it on a stage and then you could do it on TV and then, you know, or rather the movies and then, then, then TV. Um, but today talent, talent encompasses everything from, you know, you know, the, the person that, that stars in a, in a long series of commercials for an insurance company to, you know, a young kid who, you know, has very little to say to the world, except for the fact that uh, they love their life and um, anything that they associate themselves with, you should associate with yourself with as well. Um, you know, our influencer culture, uh, but it's, it's, it's very widely, widely defined. I guess, yeah, like I, I'd imagine that you're, well, everyone's perception of talent and opinion of talent has changed. And, you know, for some it's, it's for the worse, for some it's for the better. You know, I'm, I'm someone that's worked with lots of big, um, YouTube talent, big digital first talent. And I've always found that it's, it's definitely, um, diversified what we what we believe talent to be um it's totally democratized talent yeah exactly but do you as someone who's worked at you know big agencies like CAA and WME did did, did you welcome that change did you see that as as an opportunity 100 is an opportunity for sure um you know I think that uh you know the the number of platforms that exist out 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 there now um, is so diverse and so broad that that it allows more people in, but it also provides new and fresh opportunities for existing talent. So at one point, you know, I was working with Bethany Moda, um, and she was digital first, um, and you know, we as a as a as a group at, at CAA, we're we're looking for opportunities to, you know, push her into you know more traditional, uh, you know, opportunities. Um, and the reverse is so. Uh, you know, when I was working with uh, with with Gordon Ramsay, we saw an opportunity to take this guy's um, you know prodigious talent and and personality and success and move it into a number of different areas, including video games, um, which was a very profitable and very you know. Uh, it was an excellent opportunity for him to expand his brand, et cetera. So, you know, I think it goes in both directions. The number of platforms allows more people in and also um, provides more opportunities for existing talent. Love it. So can you tell me a little bit about how you originally got into, because did, did you start in film production? Is that right? I did. Were yep. you, were, are you a big movie buff? Was that your kind of dream growing up? 100%. Um, so I grew up at, uh, you know, my father was an entertainment attorney and I was fascinated by, you know, by film and filmmaking and kind of the environment in which it was, it was done. Um, I mean, I would love nothing more than to go with, you know, my, uh, my father to a set um, and, uh, and to hear stories about, you know, uh, Apocalypse Now or whatever it was. It, it, that fascinated me. So when I, you know, started to work for it, for an agency at William Morris, um, you know, it was it was really the content that that I was most intrigued by. Um, started working for a for a literary agent um, who was in, you know, very much in the spec script um, marketplace at the time, and. Um, then I moved into, and that, that was through the studio system and what have mm -hmm. you. And then I found, you know, a great affinity for independent film. Um, I was somebody who was, you know, long before I started 
at William Morris, I would see as many movies as I possibly could. I would go to the, you know, the art house cinemas. I would go to the big, huge, you know, broad, uh, you know, um, studio movies. I loved it all. Um, and so when the, an opportunity came up for me to join the kind of the independent film department at uh, William Morris, it was, you know, exactly what I wanted to do. And that was at such an amazing time for the independent film business. It was, uh, you know, there were books written about that time, Spike, Mike, Slackers and Dykes. Uh, there was, you know, it was the sort of the beginning of, at least in, in my experience, it was, it was the beginning of what Sundance has become today. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there was the Cannes Film Festival, which was just, you know, mind blowing. Uh, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Um, and in fact, it's what led me to, to television mm -hmm. because <clears throat> through my exposure to, you know, the independent film world, which oftentimes, you know, was financed in part or, or whole by, by international deals and pre-sales, et cetera. I became quite familiar with, with, you know, the, the broader, more global marketplace for content. Um, so when I was, you know, asked if I wanted to kind of uh, pivot into television um, and move to London, it was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Sure. I would love that. Um, so I was, you know, I was a kid that was brought up in, in, in uh, good old Beverly Hills um, and, uh, and UCLA. And so I'm very much a, a Los Angeles and California native. And, you know, I was 28, 29 um, when, when I was offered that opportunity. I'm like, yeah, yeah, send me to London. Do you want to think about it? Nope. <laughs> I just did. I'm ready. <laughs> yes, please. Back in my bags. Yes, please. Yes, please. So I, last, la, last year during the pandemic, I, you know, had a lot of time on my hands and, um, didn't we I've all? Always, I've, yeah, didn't we all, um, I've always been really fascinated by, you know, those key players in the entertainment business. So, um, your David Geffen's, um, Mike, his surname has gone from my head. He set up CAA. Uh, uh, Mike? Is that not his name? The guy that set up CAA? Well, there were uh, seven or eight guys. Oh, Mike Lovitz. Yes. yes. He was yes. one of, uh, of a handful. <laughs> Good old Mike. The Mike. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, from reading, from reading the, those books and um, obviously there's a lot of, I guess, you know, things that get added. Um, so I'm sure it's not exactly as, as it was, as it painted out to be, but I've got a kind of, perception or an idea in my head of what it was like to work at a big agency you know um at that time I would love to get your perspective on the atmosphere and well, like was it was it as dynamic and like deal makery as it as it sort of seemed um I think the pictures that have been painted of of you know what it's like to work in an agency and 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 you know the glamour and the pressure and the and 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 all of that i i, I think they're fairly spot on um i think in fact sometimes uh, reality is stranger than the fiction that's been made about it <laughs> um you know they are hyper competitive environments they you know the competitiveness exists within the you know x number of walls as well as externally um, and yeah, I think that, that, that there is broadly a, a reasonably accurate perception of what it's like to be in an agency, um, and the boring shit, you know, mm, that yeah, people man. don't know about really is kind of boring. Because in, in those, um, Basically, in those books, they, they talk a lot about how you should start at the mailroom. And I met uh, an agent, a sports agent from WMA a couple of weeks ago, and he said that he he did the same thing. And, and it's kind of like a rite of passage within those agencies. And it's more than I get, that. Yeah. Yeah. Can you can you talk to me a little bit about that sort of mentality? So um, I'll throw this word out that, you know, people may scoff at. But but, you know, the agencies really at their best are meritocracies um, and they lean into the people who 
are the most successful and put in the most time and are most driven and have the, the, the most um, amenable personality to the job. Um, so uh, I have been asked hundreds of times without exaggeration, you know, by, by young people or by, by folks whose, whose children are, are, are wanting to get in the business, et cetera, you know, what should you do? And, and I will say for as long as, you know, contemporary agencies, you know, exist that the best place to start, no matter what you want to do, whether you want to be a writer, a director, um, you know, an actor or anything else, uh, you know, while you are pursuing that is if you can get a job at an agency, because the, the experience that you'll get um, and the exposure to the broadest cross-section of what entertainment as a business means, you can soak up there. And I, you, know, you don't have to spend you know, years there mm. to get some value out of it. You know, uh, there are people that, that, that could go and, and get temp work at an agency and you know, while, they're, while they're pursuing their acting career and you know, they will get an insight into it and, and a sense of it. And it's, it's invaluable. And for folks that want to be more on the executive side or more on the business side, it, it is uh, nothing short of, uh, you, know, you know, a two-year master's degree type of uh, scenario so that if you really apply yourself and, you know, soak up as much as possible, as people have famously done in, in, in the past and, and currently do today, um, it, is, it is an amazing education um, and an amazing opportunity to, to be exposed to, to what we do and how we do it. 